I was l lucky uh, in, in the Catholicism I encountered as a child. Really, I was brought up as a Catholic. I was from an Irish uh, working class Catholic background. Um, but it wasn't mercifully a sort of James Joycean, you know, beat the hell out of you kind of Catholicism. It actually, it has, on the whole, despite the horrors of so many aspects of the Catholic Church, from which I still keep a wary distance, it has, on the whole, I think, influenced me for good, positively. I mean, it, it taught me to not to be afraid of thinking systematically and analytically. Um, and, it, and I suppose one picks up a certain sense of solidarity or thinking in a communal way. Um, what I just, one thing I discovered when I got to Cambridge as a student was I, how alien to me the ethic of, uh, as it were, liberal individualism was. It wasn't just that I rejected it, though I suppose I did. I, I, didn't, I didn't at that time see what was also valuable in it. But it was just um, completely out of my ken. And I, I now was just, as it were, trained, I suppose, to think in corporate institutional ways beyond the individual. And I think that's obviously one way in which that fed into my leftism. It is actually rather striking, I've always thought, how many quite prominent leftists in Britain have been sort of lapsed Catholics, as they say, or ex-Catholics. And so, on the whole, surprisingly, um, being a Catholic actually... Uh, to some degree stimulated my, my, my political and philosophical thinking. And in my recent work, I suppose I've been returning, returning to it, returning to theology a fair amount. Uh, one of the effects of my, not necessarily consciously, I haven't necessarily consciously retained a distance from the establishment, but one of the effects, I think, of my background is that I've always been something of a loner as far as institutions go. I've never been able to, I, I, don't, I don't say this is an entirely positive thing perhaps, I've never been, been able really to identify with an institution because always somewhere at the back of my mind or in my unconscious is the fact that these, I suppose, were the institutions that excluded my own family, my own people. Um, and so uh, that's occasionally got me into a spot of trouble as well. Um, so um, despite the fact that my Catholicism trained me to think in institutional terms, I mean, I think in a deep sense, human life is institutional life. Institutions are to do with the fact that life is more than an individual. In, in practice, um, I've actually found institutions quite difficult. I finally cut and ran from Oxford, from the, uh, although I had a chair there. I, I was actually rather perversely proud of that because very few people leave Oxford and they certainly don't leave chairs at Oxford and they certainly don't leave chairs at Oxford to go to Manchester, you know, which Oxford might just about have heard of. So uh, that was a sign of putting some literal distance between myself and the establishment, I think. My work has been very sort of, I suppose the buzzword these days is transgressive, uh, crossing boundaries, though I don't actually think that tr all, all kinds of transgression are by any means positive. But it has been, um, partly I think because I was brought up in the sort of Cambridge school of literature, which, which in any sense, can see, in any way, uh, anyway, conceived of literature in a very generous and comprehensive way. It was what they called literature, life and thought. But it was always literature somehow involved with history, involved with language, involved with culture. There was a whole background of F.R. Leavis and Raymond Williams to that which influenced me. So I suppose that I was trained as a literary critic in a fairly narrow way. It was within a more capacious understanding of literature and literary culture. And then I think the fact that I've been, my Catholicism, my Catholic background also gave me an interest in philosophy and if you like in more abstract thought. I wasn't afraid of abstract thought and I didn't see it as negative in the way that many literary romantics do. You know? And so when the wave, first waves of theory, of continental theory in particular, began to hit Britain, it, I was naturally predisposed to that and of course theory then you know, I mean, the thing is, with theory, you can't really define it in, term, in narrow disciplinary terms. When I write, I know where I'm going to some extent, but not a lot, not a lot. Um, writing for me is exploratory. I, I mean, I think there are two, there are 
basically two kinds of writers. There are people who conceive a fairly clear-cut project and then writing is a transcription of that project. And that can be difficult because there are many, many a breakdown between the, execution, the, the conception and the execution. I'm the kind of person who tends to compose on a computer. Um, the act of writing is both a great delight to me in itself, which is really why I write so ridiculously much, but I don't really have to, but also is constitutive of my thought. It, it's hardly ever with me that I conceive in a fairly lucid way of the, of the, of the idea and then transcribe it. It's much more, um, it, it is much more investigative. Perhaps, I mean, I did used to be, you know, what they now rather pompously call a creative writer in that I, I wrote poetry when I was a student and then I wrote drama. I've written drama since. But the two things, creative writing and so-called critical writing, don't feel very different to me.